take my dog Hemi for a walk twice a day and let him in the yard once. When I take him for a walk around the neighborhood, I always try to take different routes just to keep it from getting repetitive, not just for me, but for Hemi as well. Oftentimes on the weekends, I take him for longer walks since I have more free time, and I don't have the stress of other work-related things still lingering in my mind. On a cloudy, humid Saturday evening, it was one of those times that I decided to take him on a long walk. I'm talking like almost an hour. We were in a part of the neighborhood I wasn't too familiar with. I found a walking trail that was part of the town's huge nature preserve. It was a rather low-key path. There didn't seem to be any other people on it but me. It was a rather narrow path with woods on either side. It wasn't a cement bike path like the other trails in the preserve. Hemi led the way, pulling the leash harder than usual, probably excited by all the new random smells he was picking up. Eventually on the trail, we passed this little square park. It had a swing set and little playground, along with a basketball court, or rather what was once a basketball court, as there were no hoops. I decided to walk in through the little opening as Hemi was going crazy over something. I was planning on just sitting on one of the benches facing the playground to take a break because I was getting a little tired, but when I sat down, Hemi kept pulling and started barking at something. He'd only really do that when he saw another dog or animal, sometimes people but less often. So I entertained it and got up and started giving him slack to run towards whatever he thought he saw. I looked into the woods but couldn't see anything. The closer we got, the more aggressive Hemi got, until he was basically choking himself with the collar trying to pull me into the woods. Then out popped a man from behind a big tree. He was laughing and saying, whoa, whoa, he caught me. I told Hemi to calm down and pulled him away from the woods. And the man. I apologized for my dog and walked away, as the way in which he came out from that tree was bizarre. He said, it's all good, dude, as he seemed to follow in the direction we were walking. Hemi kept looking back and barking. I continued to tug him forward. Eventually, I had to turn around and ask if there was something I could help him with, as he even seemed to follow me outside of the park and onto the trail. He put his arms up in the air and smiled, then he said he just wants to pet my dog. I said, nah, he doesn't like you, man, we're just going to walk our own way. He didn't reply, so I turned and continued walking, faster now. Hemi kept turning around and growling, and every time I'd look back, he'd be the same distance away from me kind of off the trail a bit, half hiding behind the trees like he thought he was being slick. I was about to call back at him to piss off, but then it hit me this guy might be dangerous. I started running down the trail until I came to the little opening we entered from and exited through that. Back on the streets, Hemi would keep looking back as we ran, but I'd have to tug him to keep running. We ran all the way back to my house without stopping. I actually do cardio regularly, so I wasn't concerned about that guy keeping up. I highly doubted it especially since Hemi stopped looking back eventually. It was now a couple hours after getting back. Hemi was in his bed, which was right next to mine, when he unexpectedly lifted his head to look at the window and growled. At first, I thought it was because of the sound of the rain droplets that had just begun to hit the outside of the window. I was thinking about getting up out of bed to close the window, even though I was already comfortable in bed. Then it happened. A voice speaking into the window, a voice I recognized from a few hours ago, asking if I knew why he was in the woods. Hemi started going crazy. I jumped in my skin and turned to the window. I couldn't see his features or face, but I could see the outline of his body at my window. I yelled, what do you want? He calmly asked if I saw what he was doing in the woods. I told him no, and he asked me, are you sure? I said yes with a tremble in my voice. He said okay and I saw the outline of his body move away from the window. Hemi stopped growling after a few moments. I closed the window and latched it. I wouldn't have been able to sleep that night without calling the police. I told them I was followed by someone in the park and that he came to my window. The dispatcher asked if the man left and I told her to my knowledge, yes. She said if you were to come back to call 911 again, she implied it was a busy night since it was a Saturday. I did feel comfort knowing Hemi would give me a warning at least if he were to come back. He didn't end up coming back though, thank God. The man's words, did you see what I was doing in the park, still don't really make sense to me. I wonder if you were implying he was doing something he didn't want others to see and that he was worried I witnessed it, but that alone would raise even more questions. It was a regular night in the summer of 2010. 
I was taking my dog Poppy out for his nighttime walk. I usually take the same route. Sometimes I'll stray down one different block. Not always, though. This one night, I branched off a familiar block to a not-so-familiar one. All that I knew of this block was that there was an abandoned house on the corner. It's known as the Murder House. I've only ever passed it while driving. The first time I saw it, I slowed down just because it's such an eyesore, sticking out like a sore thumb from the rest of the houses. I never could understand why the town wouldn't just tear it down and build a new home, especially given the house's history. The reason no one ever bought it was because of the murder of a young woman inside, potentially by her boyfriend. He was never to be heard of again, no body, no signs of leaving, nothing. Walking down the block, I saw the house slowly getting closer. I already planned on stopping in front of it to take a look, but Poppy actually stopped before I even did and just looked at the house. I could tell by his ears and his head tilting that he was engaged by something. I looked around the neighboring houses, which were spaced out generously, and our neighborhood has a lot of green, meaning tons of bushes and trees lining the streets. Plus, it was as dark as could get out, and the house was conveniently situated in a gap between the streetlights. It didn't seem like any of the neighbors could possibly be watching me from where I was, so I started walking onto the grass of the property, but Poppy stayed in place. He started to growl and make whimpering type sounds, like he was frustrated. I pulled him hard enough, and he started to follow onto the property. He was fixated on a window that was opened. I stepped onto the house length front wooden deck and walked to the window. Poppy was still making growling and whimpering sounds. I pressed my face up to the screen of the window. Surprised the window was even left open. I started to wonder if maybe someone was still managing this house in some way, whatever that would even mean. Inside the house was dark, but not pitch black. I could see the walls to the empty living room, and then the opening in the wall that led to a back room with another window. As I was observing, I heard the sound of something inside the house, like a blunt object hitting the floor. It came from further back in the house, like in that back room. Having my dog with me gave me some kind of weird confidence boost to go through the side of the backyard. The backyard was literally huge. The grass was very tall, indicating I was likely wrong about any kind of property management. Only thing in the big yard was an old, wooden, decrepit-looking shed in the corner. The door to it was slightly open, but I was more curious about looking in through that window. As I looked inside, I couldn't see anything except an empty black room, probably what was once a mud room. Poppy was looking at the shed, not barking or growling though. He was kind of silent. I walked quietly towards the shed, tugging him slowly and softly to keep him quiet too. The door was open enough for me to look inside the giant shed. It was not empty. There weren't tools or bicycles or anything. There was just this skinny girl standing in the middle of the otherwise empty shed. I say girl, but I couldn't tell if it was just a girl or a woman. Poppy suddenly went ballistic, barking and making these noises I could only describe as a dog's version of screaming. He wasn't pulling to go inside of the shed, he was pulling to get away. The girl's head inside the shed turned to the door and I ran. We ran. Poppy and I ran for three straight blocks until I was out of breath. Then we walked the rest of the way back to my house. I went to a house nicknamed Murder House, where a young woman was killed potentially by her boyfriend. And then I witnessed a young woman standing in the middle of that empty shed. I don't know if I believe it was an apparition, or just some girl by chance trying to explore that abandoned house just like me. I was 10 when my parents let my brothers and I get our first dog. I'm the middle sibling, and it was always my older brother and I's job to walk the dog. Our dog's name was Nyla. Nyla was a golden retriever. My brother would walk her in the afternoon after school, and I would walk her at night. I don't remember anything about what kind of night it was. Cold, warm, weeknight, weekend, nothing. All the details I remember are what I'm including in my recounting of this experience. I was like halfway through my walk with Nyla, 